can you please tell us why you are here and where you're from? Uh, I'm from Lithuania, which is in Europe. Um, and I'm here uh, because I want to grow. I want to know my identity in Christ and I want to be useful for Jesus. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. So can you please just, just start from the beginning and go from there? Uh, yeah, so um, I come from a difficult family. Um, I was born in the 90s in a very difficult time in Lithuania. We just got our freedom back from Russia, so the country didn't, didn't really have any laws or, or any proper structure as a country should have. And um, uh, my dad was a very wealthy businessman. Uh, we were one of the wealthiest families in Lithuania, and uh, he had a business in Russia, and when he came back to Lithuania to all of this mess, uh, he got terrorized by mafia, and he started fighting against that. So I grew up in fear. I grew up in fear for my life. Uh, my mom grew up in fear for her life. And um, yeah, um, there, there was a point that was reached where some, someone had to die, the head of the mafia or my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, and my dad was murdered with his brother. I was seven years old and I remember uh, this rage and this hate was just born in me. And I was, I was just feeling that there's no justice in this world. and. Um, I was dealing with so much fear at the same time as well that things will go bad in my life. And, and my family was always facing all of these, you know, misfortunes, all of these tragedies, you know. In my family line, it was so common to, for the f parents to bury their own children. Mm -hmm. We had suicides, you know, and I was just, when I was growing up, I was hearing just how victorious the enemy is over my family. And you, you don't have hope in, in, the, in, in, in that kind of life. I didn't have hope, I didn't have faith. Uh, I started hurting myself when I was eight. Um, and I was put on antidepressants for 11 years. Um, I didn't have an identity. I was so lost and confused about so many things in life. And I, I really desired to know God. I really wanted to ask him so many questions about uh, why these things happened to me. and. Um, when you're so broken, uh, you want to know the future. You want to know what the future has for you. Yeah. Um, so I started turning to, you know, astrologers, to, to mediums, to fortune tellers. I wanted to know, I wanted to be safe in my future. Just wanted, because the root was hate. The root was yeah. just this brokenness. And, um, and I started dabbling in that myself when I was a teenager. I got so interested in tarot cards and astrology. Um, I started, you know, uh, learning that teaching, uh, like learning that myself. I wanted to have a business around new age practices, about around crystals, around all of that. And I thought, I thought I'm doing good. You know, I thought there's something as white magic. I thought that you can actually help people prevent tragedies in life when you, when you know into the future and stuff like that. Um, I didn't grow up in a Christian family, so I didn't, I didn't know that there's a relationship with Jesus you can have and. And I never thought that he's available to me. Mm. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, and I, I just had this group of friends later on that we were all interested into the same things, into the same practices. And um, we, were, we were called enlightened. Enlight we, we thought that we reached an enlightened state where we know about how karma works, how, you know, I found so much peace. I thought back then I found so much peace in reincarnation and knowing like, oh, there's actually some meaning in everything that happened to me and stuff, but it was just a counterfeit from the enemy. Right. And, you know, and I was looking at my friends one day and I was thinking like, oh, we're so enlightened, we're so like, you know, full of this wisdom, ancient wisdom, but we're so broken, we're yeah. drinking, we're partying, none of our lives testify wow. of peace, you yeah. know, of joy, right. uh, none of that stuff, you know, and, and I was just sitting one day, you know, in my chair and just, just looking, my friend is getting ready for like a shamanic ceremony, and I'm like, just thinking like, we're so lost, like, this is, this is not happening, and, and I remember I started questioning my own practices, my own beliefs, you know, I was constantly struggling with anxiety, drinking, partying, you know. I, I didn't have a dad, so I was looking for love in relationships. I was looking fulfillment in, in, in relationships. And uh, yeah, just a mess. And um, I remember I saw this one testimony and there was this woman, she thir thir for 30 years she was actually practicing the same things I wanted to build my life on. 
And in that testimony, she was denying everything. She was saying, please burn my books, you know. I'm refunding your businesses, the ones that I helped you influence. Wow. You know, she just gave it all to, you know, and, and, and all for Jesus, you know. She, she was a millionaire in, in that. She was working with Hollywood, with, you know. And I was thinking, wow, if this, she's telling this, like, everything I want. I want to have this. Mm -hmm. And she's denying this for Jesus. And I was just thinking, there must be some meaning in that. Right, there yeah. must be some truth That's in that. Right, yeah. You know, and, and she led me into, you know, into salvation prayer. And, you know, I repented. I, I, this unveiling happened to me yeah. that, you know, I know my creator and I was turning away from him. Mm. I was choosing not to follow him. And all of this sin, just, just this heaviness, this weight of sin, of this idolatry fell on my shoulders. I remember I was just repenting for everything, just like crying and, and this peace, I received the baptism of the Holy yes, Spirit. Amen. You know, uh, I didn't have any Christian friends around me. I didn't have anyone, you know, I was just in my own little like basement apartment and on my knees and, and you know, I just, I, I didn't even know what hit me, but I just know that that's God. Yeah. You know, that was my creator. Every cell was worshiping him in, in me, you know. And, and I remember I was just screaming Jesus in my apartment to my roommates. I was saying, I finally found him. I finally found a God, you know, that cares for me, you know. <laughs> um, and, you know, <laughs> it was such a joyful moment. Yeah. It was something I was looking for all my life. And... Um, yeah, and he, I, I received deliverance instantly. It was very, very powerful. And I was telling all my friends about it. I, was, I didn't care. I was going to cafes. If they worked in a cafe, I would come in a cafe, and I would tell so loud that so many people would hear. And, <laughs> you know, um, just I was so excited, and still I'm so excited to share that you don't have to be alone in your brokenness, that you don't have to be alone when you lose your loved one. Yeah. You know, he's so perfect. He's a perfect daddy for me now, you know, the one that I was longing for all my life. And he will take care of you. He will take care of you in ways you can't imagine. Yeah. You can't right. imagine. He knows the hairs on your head. You know, he knows what you need yeah, in your times right. of distress, of depression, of anxiety, you know. Yeah. After, after I received the, 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 the Holy Spirit, you know, I was attacked at dreams, you know. All of these innocent practices I thought I was practicing just was revealed in a spiritual sense. Yeah. You know, I was, I was having sleep paralysis. I was tormented by demons at night and sexual abuse. And I didn't know my authority, you know, and they were using that against me. Yeah. But, but I was praying to God, God, lead me. Lead me to people that, that would equip me in this battle. You know, and, and hungry generation was revealed to Amen. me. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Um, and I, I learned about my authority. I learned how to take ground. I learned how to, you know, because because we have authority over over demons yeah. and that's right. Yeah. And and how to take back my territory. How to take back my home. You know. And, that's and, right. Yeah. And just you know, life is just so good with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Now, okay, you had shared with us after your father had passed, you were filled with this rage and hatred can you tell me when did that transition can you tell us a little bit about that yeah so actually it wasn't that first day it was the next day that I was talking with Jesus you know nobody told me that you can have a relationship but I instantly knew that there's a relationship That's with right. him That's right. um, and he told me that if you want to be free from this hate you need to forgive your dad's murderer you need to let me judge him yeah. You cannot be the judge of his life. That's right. And when I gave, when I gave him to, to, to God, I gave the situation to God, you know, I felt this weight was lifted. I felt like this yeah. glasses of hate was taken off Amen. my eyes. I could see nature. I was yeah. running in nature. I was looking at creation because everything was worshiping God. Yeah. And I could finally see without the glasses of hate and judgment, Yeah. Amen. you know. Man, that is so beautiful. That is just absolutely so beautiful. So please tell us. <laughs> we can see it all over you, but tell us a little bit of how your life is now. <laughs> yeah, life is, is so free. You know, living with Jesus, you're just so free from, from so many things. And, and he's so quick to provide, to provide the way out 
when you're struggling, you know, and, and even in times where, where things are not easy, you know, you still know you have this Sorry. father that cares for you, you know, you, you, you're, you know, with all of this witchcraft, with all of this black magic, white magic, you know, you have to understand that you are dabbling with a source that seeks your destruction. Yes, it wants right. to destroy you. Yeah. You know, and when you turn to the one who actually loves you and the one that created you and you were made to be loved by him, you know, life is just worth living, you know? Yeah, amen. <laughs> and, amen. And, you know, and th there is nothing, there is nothing that hell took away from you that heaven can't That's restore. Right. That's right. Your testimony is so rich and so full, but can you please just leave us with what is your word of advice for those who are watching that may be dabbling in that white magic? Just tell us what your advice is. You know, I know where you're coming from. I know that you want to know God. I know how that feels like. But, you know, give Jesus a chance. If you have never given him a chance, just give him a chance, you know, and just... Let him, let him do things for you. You don't need to be stuck in your rituals, in your, in your ways of trying to figure out God. You know, let him reveal yourself to you. Yes. Ask him into your life.